communication between countries half a world apart, nowadays no more than a matter of hours, the shrinking world makes nonsense of frontiers, forms ever larger units, compels new thinking along the economic front. From capital to capital, airliners cross national boundaries without passengers being aware of it. Expanding trade boggles the tariffs, duties and the customs house. Hence the growing insistent demand for free trade in Europe. At Church House, discussion of the European free trade idea was opened by Mr. Hefkert Emery. That veteran statesman Robert Schumann, France, gave to the conference the benefit of long international experience. As an observer came the Duke of Edinburgh. Fifteen countries, including Britain, joined in the frank discussion. As the Chancellor addressed the conference, Pathé News sought the opinion of his predecessor, Mr. Peter Thornicroft. Isn't there a danger of unemployment in this country? No, enlarged opportunities for trade never threw any man out of work. What I think is true is that uh, men may change their jobs or make things different to what they're making at the present time in the different countries of Europe. America largely owes her great development to free trade within her boundaries. Half a continent with no customs barriers, no tariffs. Russia enjoys similar advantages. And so, under the proposed free trade scheme, would Western Europe, now restricted and hopelessly out of step with mid-20th century trade requirements. The tariff walls of Europe virtually condemn 100 mile an hour trade to crawl at an out of date 30. Six countries have taken the first steps towards abolishing their economic frontiers and formed the European common market. In Rome met statesmen of France, Italy, Western Germany, Belgium, Holland and Luxembourg. Over a maximum period of 15 years, they will reduce and eventually abolish trade barriers between themselves and at the same time maintain a common tariff against the world outside. Eleven other countries may follow their example, though maintaining their individual tariffs. The paperboard industry very strongly opposes joining the European free trade area. Deprived of its tariff, it fears that foreign competition would drive it out of business. The textile industries take the same view. Emphatically, textile tycoon Cyril Lord denounced the proposed free trade area. What is your opinion of European free trade? Well, I think if we enter it, it will be tragic. It will be disastrous for this country. You see, these theorists and academic minds, they really don't know. It sounds all right in theory, but I'm a manufacturer and I've got to produce the goods. But you can't produce goods today uh, against European competition if we are paying an average of four and six an hour against a price of something like, a, a figure of something like two and nine an hour in Europe. Do you think there's a danger to our level of employment? It's bound to be affected. If goods are pouring into this country duty-free, there's going to be mass unemployment. There's no shadow of a doubt about it. Agriculture would remain exempt from the rigors of free trade, even if Britain joined the European area. Consuming more food than we grow ourselves, we give preference to imports from the Commonwealth, which takes our manufacturers in return. Poultry farmers already face the severe competition of Denmark, so do dairy and pig farmers. But with agriculture left out, and with two sections of manufacturers in opposition, no less than 80% of British industry believes the European free trade area will bring home the bacon of increased prosperity. To hear what Britain stands to gain, listen again to Mr. Thornycroft. What's the advantage from the trade point of view? Well, very shortly, the advantage is that it throws open to our exporters a market richer than the United States of America and larger than Russia. We're really moving out of the age of nations and into the age of continents. And when you see the East united and moving centrally on internal lines, I think one recognizes that the countries of Europe are going to have to come much more closely together, not only on trade, but on defense and foreign policy too. Wheat will come into Britain free of duty, whether we join or stay out of the continental scheme. Preference to produce of the Commonwealth will continue. 80% of British industry believes that greater prosperity will be ours if we become a member of the free trade area. Thank you.